Nobel Prize-winning scientist Peter Agri had an idyllic childhood growing up in the Sputnik era of the 1950s in a Scandinavian community in Minnesota. Peter was a Boy Scout and worked on dairy farms during the summers. He became entranced with the special magic of science by watching Don Herbert as Mr. Wizard on Saturday morning TV. Mr. Wizard did science experiments. As it turned out, so did Agri's father. My, my dad, uh, Cord Agri, was an organic chemist. He was the chairman of chemistry at St. Olaf College in Minnesota. He was a, he was a loyal member of the ACS. He, uh, he made science real to us by inviting my brothers and me up to his laboratory at St. Olaf where we did little experiments. And we were like youngsters. I was six years old when he demonstrated that a drop of one colorless solution into another could turn it bright pink. Obviously, these were indicator dyes that were being protonated and deprotonated. And as we explained what was going on, it was like a special kind of magic, but we understood the magic. So as, as a little kid, it was pretty clear science was something that was fascinating. Dad was my hero. Another hero entered Agri's life when his family moved to Berkeley, California, after Dad landed a National Science Foundation fellowship. Agri's father worked with the great scientist Linus Pauling from Caltech who won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1954 and the Nobel Peace Prize in 1962. Cord Agri and Pauling both served on the ACS Education Committee. Agri remembers eating cornflakes with Pauling at the breakfast table when Pauling stayed with his family for a few days. As Agri became a teenager in the 1960s, times were changing in the U.S. The Vietnam War and opposition to it were raging. Young Agri became restless and rebellious. The result? A detour from his eventual career in science. Agri dropped out of high school for a while and became a part-time truck driver before returning to school. He then enrolled at Augsburg College, where his father was chair of chemistry. And it was really that experience with the ambition not to become a scientist, but to become a medical doctor that I, I took all the courses in general chemistry, organic chemistry, analytical chemistry, physical chemistry. And so the, the science was really the, me the mechanism to become a physician. I hoped to work on third world diseases and some vague notions of an academic career, but it wasn't too well formulated. But science was, was the method to achieve a profession rather than the, the primary objective. He grew more and more interested in laboratory research while in medical school at Johns Hopkins. He earned his MD degree at Hopkins in 1974 then continued his clinical training elsewhere before returning to Hopkins. He became an assistant professor there in 1983 and worked on RH factors in the blood. That research led to the serendipitous discovery of aquaporins, which Agri describes as a plumbing system for cells. Aquaporins are channels for transporting water in and out of cells. In 2003, Agri shared the Nobel Prize in chemistry for this very discovery. Aquaporins turned out to be a way that Agri could get back to his original interest malaria, and other diseases of the third world. The interest in malaria, quite honestly, preceded any of our work on the aquaporins. It was my decision to go to medical school because I was interested in third world diseases. As a student, I worked on cholera, a horrible diarrheal disease. And my interest in hematology was in part, I wanted to get involved in malaria, but things were working so well in the lab, I kept delaying getting involved in malaria. The direct link between the aquaporins and malaria was the fact that the aquaporins are present in all life forms, including the malaria parasite, including the Anopheles mosquitoes. So it gave us sort of an excuse to go in a new direction, a direction that I always hoped to go, go into. In this international year of chemistry, Agri recalls how his travels in high school to the former Soviet Union were an eye-opener. They were an early introduction to the sheer size of the world, the diversity of its people, and the scope of their needs, especially in the developing world. That awareness intensified with Agri's interest in third world diseases. What message does Agri have for the young people in those countries and elsewhere who may be coming under science's spell? A career in science could be absolutely wonderful, more exciting than anything else I can imagine for someone like myself. But the challenges are large. It's not easy. The, uh, the, the work is, is very, very demanding. Uh, the chances of getting funded are small. You have to have, a, I think, a real fire in your belly for making discoveries that are important. It's not, it's not an easy career. But those who've made the commitment could be ready to make discoveries that'll change the course of uh, science, of public understanding. And in my lifetime, things have changed a lot.